Hi paper crafters, welcome to another Design with Joe video. I'm Joanne Rogers, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. Today's video is an edited version of a live recording. Enjoy! I take a current card out of a Stampin' Up! catalog and I reproduce it for you. I show you how to break it down into the steps that I figure it might have taken to create the card. We are lucky as Stampin' Up! demonstrators that we do get all of the supplies that were used in the uh, different designs. Not any of the measurements and not a lot of the actual step-by-step -step technique. So this is my interpretation of it, and uh, I think it turns out okay, and I'm hoping that you think it does too. Please, I would love for you to share this with your friends and uh, to follow me on Facebook uh, and take a look at my website, which is www.designwithjoe.ca. I post all kinds of different designs there that don't show up here, and I also have a group called Design with Joe VI Peeps, and over there, we do a lot of fun crafting, and it's exclusive to that group, so on two Tuesday nights uh, we get together and it's very interactive. So this one is not quite as interactive but I do want to show you some great designs and my interpretation of them. So what I have here is the uh, current annual catalog from Stampin' Up! So it runs from May 2021 until April 22 and today is October 15th of 2021. And uh, so we will be focusing a little, you'll see a little Christmas, a little fall today, and then a, a more general all occasion. And I always have at least two other designs to show you for the card we're gonna make. So I asked you in yesterday's post, so I post a day before, and I post the picture of the page that I am going to case from. And so this was the page. And I asked you, which of these two cards do you think I'm going to make? And I got all kinds of different ideas. I had some people thinking this one, and I had some people thinking this one. I never make the card exactly as is. I always make it different so that you don't only get this idea or this idea, you get my idea plus one of those ideas and another two. So it really is a way for you to start using your stamps and your supplies you have at home. And if you like this kind of thinking and kind of idea, I also do a sketch and stamp club. And what that is, is every week I give you, I send uh, the subscribers to that club an idea. And every month is a different idea. And then I give another three ideas or designs based on that same sketch or layout or technique um, throughout the month. So our first um, order of business is we have a card and this card is five and a half by eight and a half and I've scored it at four and a quarter and folded it already. We have a piece of designer series paper and you may not know where this paper comes from, this paper is out of our Blackberry Beauty specialty paper. And so it has some flowers on top and it's got some sprigs. So it's got a background of cinnamon cider and then quite a few levels or different lighter is this color right here. This piece here is two inches by five. And then I have a piece of bumblebee and this piece here is one and a quarter by two and a half. And then I have some scraps. So I have some scraps of very vanilla and it doesn't really matter on the size here, just scraps of paper. And then here I have a, this is very vanilla and this is um, garden green. So we're gonna start with our garden green. And I'm choosing to use the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set today. And uh, the reason why is I'm not ready to give up uh, fall yet here. So it's not the fantastic weather yet that uh, it's been quite chilly here and very, very frosty in the mornings. But I still want to celebrate some flowers because I think they're a gorgeous flower. They really are my favorite flower and I use them in my logo and my design a lot. So this one, what I'm going to be using instead of the large one, which we see a lot, I'm going to use this smaller one here and I'm also going to use the leaf and I've chosen this set of words to use. And I love the sentiments in this set. I love, love, love the mix of brush lettering with more uh, the type font. So I have some garden green here. I've pulled in the leaf, already have it on my uh, block. And so I'm just going to stamp two of them, garden green on top of garden green. Okay, so we are doing uh, just 
tone on tone, basically. But you'll see that the green here is a little bit darker. It sinks into the paper a little bit, but it's still going to leave a really good impression. And we are done with that garden green, so I'm gonna put that to the side. The next one I'm gonna do using the Stamparatus. So I'm gonna pull in the Stamparatus, and I already have my sunflower right on the platform itself. And so I'm just going to put it in, I think I'll put it in up here, up top. And I have a little trick when I use my Stamparatus. I put a black, half a black sheet of paper into another one of those um, cases, which you can purchase uh, empty. And I just put that in behind. And what that does, it really allows me to see those grid marks a lot better. And so if I were having words here, I would be able to line them up but when I have it underneath, it gives a much more stable stamping surface or inking up surface. So I'm going to use the cinnamon cider and I'm gonna use my large stamp pad here and tap that all over. Oops, I guess I need a piece of paper in there. And I'm not worried too much about where I'm gonna put this because I just want to stamp it and I am gonna cut this out later. So I'm just going to make sure that's right onto my piece of paper and I've, I usually have a piece of um, paper towel here, just it makes it easier to rub. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the technique. Now, have you figured out the card? You probably have. So this is the card we're going to be making. And so I'm showing you this technique as well as the card itself. So they've stamped tone on tone here and then they've colored. So this is a super fast way that you can color your rubber stamping images. So I'm going to pull in some sponge daubers and I've got three of them here and I've got Cajun craze I've got uh, crushed curry that I'm using in my bumblebee because they're almost they're very similar colors and cinnamon cider so here's my cinnamon cider again here's my bumblebee and here's my Cajun craze so I'm leaving my piece right on my stamparatus and that's key for this particular technique that I'm going to show you so I'm going to pick up my lightest color first I'm hoping that that is ending up in the screen I'll move over just a smidge here and I'm going to start with that um, bumblebee so I'm going to pick up my color I'm gonna pull in a little bit of grid paper and put it underneath, because I do want to tap this off on top of a scrap piece of paper, and I'm just tapping. So your finger goes into the little hole at the end, and then I'm going to color directly in a swirling motion over top of my rubber stamp image, rather. And so I, you know, I could be done there. So I have a beautifully colored sunflower, but I want to now go in with a little bit of cinnamon cider, tap, into the ink and off, and I'm going to go not quite as far out, and I want to deepen the color a little bit more by uh, blending it. So I blended my color into a little bit more brown, and now I'm gonna go in also with just a little bit of Cajun Craze and do the same thing. And Cajun Craze is the color that I've used, that I'm gonna use for the card. And that's gonna go even a littler, a littler spot than the other two. So I've colored my image. I could go in and do the green, but I'm not going to, and you'll see why in just a minute. But now what I've done is I have actually decreased the intensity of the stamped image itself. So I want to go in and I want to uh, make that a little bit more bold again. So that's why I left it in exactly the same place. So you want to, the key here is you always want to make sure you don't move your stamp. And let's see if I was successful there. And our, our uh, magnets are usually pretty good. So you stamp right over top and then what you have, you, I hope you can see that, you have an instantly more vibrant um, piece. Okay, so we're done that guy and I would stamp a second one using the exact same technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one out with my um, uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now, before I close that though, I do want to clean it off. Take this out like this, and I'm gonna put the words in. And I'm going to do my words, I already have them on my piece as well. And I'm just, move that up here. I'm just going to do the same thing, but down here. So I need my piece of bumblebee and my piece of bumblebee. I tend to use, I always go in one down one inch and in one inch. It seems that's the, uh, where I've 
my sweet spot for me. And um, I like it because I'm not close to these edges. You can sometimes miss a little bit of stamping on those edges. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm in the right spot. And that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to ink up this, um, these, this set of words with some, I think, what was I gonna use? The um, cinnamon cider again. So I've inked that up, stamp it. Pick it up and if I want to put just a little bit more and I see that I actually have my magnet a little too far over because I missed the S on congratulations. So I'm going to bring this one in a little bit more. So let's ink that up again. So this is a great thing about the Stamparatus is that you leave it in exactly the same spot and you get right over the exact same one. Here we go. So we are Cinnamon cider right on top. I can pull that out now because I'm done with that. And I'm going to clean my image. I'm gonna close that up and I'm gonna take this one out too. Now I'm gonna cut this out with my stamp and cut and emboss machine and my sunflower dies. So these dies go along perfectly with the stamp set. And this guy here goes right around the outside of our image. Here is my mini, and I open it up. That one can go over here now. And I use the little sandwich that it tells me to use. So this is my cutting surface, place die cutting edge down. So that's my number one. And it also tells me that I need two of the number twos, one and two. So I put one on the bottom, put in our sunflower and it fits right over top. So you should get a perfect um, um, <laughs> shape. That's not the outline of your image. So one thing I do do, you can put your, your plate on very carefully here so you don't move it, but I pull in post-it notes. Just cheap old post-it notes I get from the dollar store and I place that, I'm gonna move it now. I place it right over top. And that's going to hold it in place. I can get, I don't know, quite a few uses out of that post-it note too. So now I'm just going to put that in. Oh, and I have my handle on the wrong side. Of course I do. Well, let's do it this way. I always have my handle on the wrong side for those of you who watch and follow. So put it through. It's a little bit harder when you are doing it from the back. But you can do it. There you go. So there we have it cut out. So one thing I'm also going to do is... We have these green leaves already, and I could have cut those out at the same time, but I have some already cut out here. So we could have um, put these leaves on, but I wanna cut them off. So I'm gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna go right around the outside edge here and I'm gonna cut off those leaves. Now I'm not gonna get that little bit of vanilla around the outside edge you see here, but I'm okay with that because what I just want to do is get rid of those leaves because I just think that they're going to interfere with the look of the card that I'm doing. So I have one sunflower, two leaves, and here I have another sunflower. So this one here, I want to show you. This one here I did do without over stamping it. So you can see really the difference in the intensity. And then this one I did do with the over stamping. And then this one here, I did less coloring than I did on this one. So you can really vary the color of your uh, stamping just by uh, the over stamping, the amount of color that you put on with your sponge dauber. So I'm gonna pull in my stamp and seal. And my stamp and seal I'm going to use on top of my silicone craft sheet because it just gives that little bit of uh, cushion for me to be able to um, get my my glue to come out a little bit easier. So make sure I'm opening my card the right way. The fold is at the top. So this piece goes down about oh, half an inch from the bottom. And that will give you as well about half an inch from the right hand side. Then this piece with the words goes down next. And then this extends a little bit. So let me pull in that picture. Right, I always like to show you what I'm doing. So, so far we have this on. Now I'm putting this piece on so you can see that it juts out to the right and down to the bottom. So I'm going to have that and it's, 
I'm eyeballing it pretty much at this point. I'm not doing any measuring. It's just the way that I think it needs to go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both flowers on and I'm gonna put both leaves. So this one I like a little bit better because it's a little bit darker. So it's gonna sit on the front and this one's gonna sit in behind it. And one leaf is gonna go off this way and one's gonna go off the other way, that way. So I like to glue my leaves to my flower. And I'm gonna do that for quickness with a mini glue dot. So I'm just taking that piece, putting it upside down on a glue dot. And then I'm going to, so because I've cut that off, that leaf off, I'm going to hide this underneath the other one. And so I'm gonna put my leaf off this way. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And now this one I'm going to glue down and this one I'm gonna put on with dimensionals. So I'm gonna use liquid glue for this guy liquid glue is great in case I need to move that around just a little bit later so let's put him here maybe and then I'm gonna pull in some of my dimensionals those are my little baby ones I don't want those I want my larger ones and it's gonna go on the back here so it's just gonna go one there and I'm using my take your pick. It just seems to be able to pick up those a little bit better. I can lift off the backs of these fairly well. If you don't have a take your pick, take your thumb and press right into that um, backing and you might be able to lift it off just a little bit easier. If you do have a take your pick, just poke right into it and you can pull it right off. So now I'm just going to put this guy. It's gonna overlap here just a little bit. Okay, and then we have to have some bling on there, I think. So let me pull in a little bit of some bling and we're gonna put some of the brush metallic dots. You can see I have lots of the antique uh, gold, so I'm gonna use those. Now what's interesting about this is if we count those and I'm going off of the catalog, there's actually six. So it's unusual that we have six of them on our piece. So if you wanted, you can put another one on there. I actually think it seems quite balanced like that. So I'm going to leave that as is. So this one is my fall and I, I love the colors in here. So Cajun Craze, Bumblebee and Cinnamon Cider together with the Garden Green, just a real rich kind of color. And then I thought, well, let's do Christmas. So for this Christmas one, I use the poinsettia petals which is a stamp set and the dies, the poinsettia dies, and I embossed. And because I had, and so I, I modified, because I had a bigger set of words that I wanted to put on here, I needed a bigger piece of uh, cardstock here. So this is uh, shaded spruce. In behind is soft sea foam. And this piece comes from the Painted Christmas set of paper, which you may have at home. And then because this was a bigger flower, I thought we only needed one flower. One flower, two leaves, and then I did put a sprig in here. So my coloring this time is just petal pink. So just plain petal pink. I didn't do any other um, blending of color. And I didn't go right out to the edges. I wanted that sort of blush color of poinsettia that you see. So there's that one. And then I have one more that's fun for all occasions. And this is a happy birthday one. And I wanted to show you on this one that you can color more, that you can go right out to the edge. So here I went past the, um, the outlines of the stamp. So here I did too. And then I cut them out and it's perfectly fine to do that, especially on a fun, whimsical kind of card like this. So I'm always interested to know which one appeals to you the most. But really, what I really want to show you is that you can really get some different looks here. It's the exact same layout. It's the exact same technique. And you just apply them a little bit differently and use them slightly differently. So thank you everybody for joining in. Um, I will be back again for another Case the Caddy and I always do post this as well on my blog and it gives you a really up close look at those cards so that you can see them. And I also edit the video. So uh, we edit the video and we post it up on YouTube. So if you have friends who are not Facebook friends, still give them a, a, a little nudge to say, hey, take a look at that. You might find something that appeals to you. So thanks everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day, a paper crafting day maybe, and we'll see you again.
Bye-bye.